Kids here in Philadelphia have had several days to experience all that this city has to offer, and they get to offer a lot, too. So is Mo Rocca, who's in front of one of Philadelphia's most famous eateries. Mo, where are you at? Good morning. You know, good morning, Gail. Listen, when you think Philly and food, the first thing that springs to mind is exactly what we won't be talking about. We get it. Everyone loves cheesesteaks. It's Philadelphia. But there's so much more to this city's culinary scene. Historically, what kind of a food city is Philadelphia? Historically, I think it is a blend of sort of comfort foods, like sandwiches, meat and potatoes. But sandwiches are a big part of Philadelphia's Huge. culinary history. Huge. This is the best sandwich city in the country. I don't know if you agree, but it is. But Philadelphia chef Greg Vernick isn't making sandwiches. His namesake restaurant was named one of the top 50 restaurants in America the year after it opened. The growing season dictates a lot. So when things come into season and they're delicious and we can get them locally, we put an emphasis on that on the menu. I mean, the watermelon cocktail is probably a local watermelon. A lot of the menu right now, a lot of the specials we do. Where's the gin from? Beef eater. Where's mm. beef eater from? Who cares? Are you particularly proud of your success because you were raised here? Well, I don't consider myself a success. I don't feel like we're a success. I still feel like we're kind of junior varsity playing in a bit of a varsity game in Philly. Yes, in case you haven't heard, Philadelphia's restaurant scene is major league. Zahav, with its modern Israeli cuisine, earned a James Beard Award for star chef Michael Solomonov. I moved here from Florida, sort of like on the way to New York, you know? And uh, I stopped in Philly and never left. When you say on the way to New York, you mean that literally? Literally and figuratively. Philly is obviously an easier place to live than New York. Things cost less, like the housing is more affordable, the restaurants are more affordable. So this is a hummusia, which is a hummus stall. It's a hummus restaurant. So th there's actually a name for a place that there sells hummus. Is. In a city that's serious about its street food, Solomonov offers okay. his alternative. Okay, so this is very interesting to me because she is making... She's making pita. Um, and she's making it by hand. Yeah. Look at that piping hot pita. Oh, that's so different that's than so what you'd get yeah. like in a bag, you know, or right. like the, the back of like a supermarket. So His cool. Dizengoff is an American take on the hummus booths. So we're just going to wipe it? That are commonplace throughout the Middle East. And just across the street, his Federal Donuts offers coffee, along with an array of handmade donuts and, wait for it, Mm. Fried chicken that's mm. simply irresistible. I know so many people hate this word, but so moist. I know. It is a pretty strange word to say out loud, but we are happy that you're saying it. There's you know, nothing worse than dried out chicken. Right. I mean, there are some things worse, like a tsunami would be worse than that. Just don't call any of Solomonov's restaurants trendy or buzzy. In Philly, like, nobody really cares about hype that much. Like, if you're not great, if you're not providing a, a good experience and, and good food or good service or whatever that kind of is per um, restaurant, nobody cares. This <laughs> was not happening. It was totally, really desolate. While a number of chefs have elevated the Philly food scene, Chef Marcy Turney and her partner Valerie Safran have also helped transform an entire neighborhood. I wanted my own little restaurant and Val wanted her own little retail shop and then all of a sudden uh, the neighborhood supported us and Philadelphia supported us. And so it was like, what else can we bring? The couple now own nine restaurants and boutiques along Philadelphia's 13th Street, former red light district. Who are Bud and Marilyn? Bud and Marilyn are my grandparents. The latest is Bud and Marilyn's, <laughs> an homage to the flavors of Marcy's native Wisconsin. These are Wisconsin cheese curds. Anything distinctive? about the clientele, about the diners in Philadelphia? Diners in Philadelphia, first of all, they're loyal. And Philly is very proud of our chefs and our restaurants. Why stop now? You should open another restaurant. <laughs> what would it be? I actually don't even know what it would be. I think we've kind of covered everything, and now we're trying to relax a little bit. Yeah, and I'm getting old. <laughs> And attention must be paid to the cheesesteak. I'm standing in front of Pat's, which is the birthplace of the cheesesteak. And it, it, there's a reason tourists come from all over the world. The, the sandwich is terrific. Look at the meat. It's not all shredded up. It's, it's a really terrific sandwich. Nora? 
Oh, thank <laughs> you. And then you sent some stuff, too. Yeah. I know. We got some This is from to... By George. Now, listen, I didn't have dinner last night, so I'm really ready to eat the paper. But I, what I like about the look of this, the bun is sesame. It's warm. The cheese is melted. Caramelized onions, always good. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we went out to lunch, Charlie. Thank you for taking Gail and I out to lunch yeah, yesterday. We had a good time, we, didn't we? We had a delicious lunch. We went to Dandelions. Dandelions, yeah. Dandelions which was delicious. I would go back there again. By George, this is awesome. Very, very good. Awesome. Good food right. in Philly.